Hi, Val. Hi. Okay, where, tell me where you're at. I am in Virginia Beach, and it's amazing out. And you're packing to find your way to Steamboat, right? I'm coming to Steamboat, and I'm super excited to come there. Have, it's been a while, so I'm pumped. I am excited, and I'm, what I'm really excited about is I'm excited about the, the workshop. And uh, one thing that I think is, for me, when I, when I took your first workshop, is I was like, what is a chakra anyways? Like, I get that basic of principles, but like, what is a chakra? Like, can you tell me one chakra and explain like the idea around it? And, you know, what is a chakra? Yeah, yeah. So a, ch a, a chakra ultimately really is translated as a spinning wheel or disc. And they, they are energy centers and we all have them in our bodies. And we have over about 300 in our body. And what you normally hear about are the main seven, which are all along the central nervous, the central channel, basically the shishamna. And um, so what these do, these, these spinning wheels, these energy centers in our body is they store our emotion, our ur urges, our habits, our traumas, our past experiences and everything like that. And so any kind of it, any kind of situation in life, anything good or bad, quote unquote, is going to actually put trigger an opening of that chakra that in, in any moment it happens all day long actually um, also that any any time there is something that occurs that maybe is traumatic it can actually shut down that energy center and it considered basically it's, um, it's considered being blocked and so we learn ways of um, surviving in life to in order to um, to to really show up in the world doesn't even mean it necessarily serves us. So that's that's really that's the kind of quick nutshell of it. Okay. Yeah. So seven. So tell me one. Like, give me one chakra. Give me the name. Like, how does it show up and present in the body? You know. So the, the second chakra, so with each one, we're going to talk about the developmental stages, how it shows up um, excessive or, or deficient. Um, we'll talk about the sound that's associated with the color that's associated. And all of them resonate at a certain vibrational frequency. You just say sound that's associated? Yeah. So ev everything. So, what's that? Oh, I know. So you've got sound, color. Yeah. Development. Vibration. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's all. Okay. So. When, 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 when this chakra is developed uh, at, at, in a certain um, stage in our lives, so for example, um, the first chakra is developed when we're in our mother's womb and up to when we're one years old. And so what the, every, every chakra represents a certain tonality and that tonality basically is um, it's safety and security in the world. Now, um, every chakra, just like everything in life, has a shadow side. So the shadow side of chakra the first chakra is going to be fear so that means that if we're experiencing any kind of um in any kind of a threat to our safety and security known or unknown conscious or unconscious that can ultimately create a um a, a a block in that chakra and so the more we can understand our own selves and become aware of our certain tendencies about how this might manifest in our lives the more tools we have in our back pockets in order to navigate and see oh right now like i'm i'm um you know if you're if you're starting a new relationship ending a relationship having a child um leaving a job starting a new job anything like that all of those things can trigger your first chakra because it has to do with the root, the foundation of your life. So, and if it feel like if you feel a block, you know, it may show up as like, like you said, like there might be something going on in a relationship. Like how would a blocked chakra maybe show up in someone's life? Well, that's the thing. So our feelings are always guiding us. And that's why um, knowing what the shadow is, is, um, is really useful. So the shadow is fear. And so when we're okay. experiencing fear, ultimately we want to look at that and get curious, you know, what am I afraid of? And if it's around like, oh, I'm afraid that, um, that this, this career change won't be successful. I'm afraid that I won't be good at this. I'm afraid that this relationship might fail. It's those kind of things. And, and most likely, you know, we may be dealt with issues of uh, abandonment or, um, or even because they're all different ways of why it would show up excessive or deficient. So that could be with first chakra. It could be abandonment. It could be yeah. um, sexual abuse. It could be um, yeah. you know, anything like that that can really open that up for someone. And this is deep work. But here's the beautiful thing about energy, Talaya, is that 
whether or not we're choosing to deal with these things, they're still there. So they show up subconsciously all the time. And if we have a default, whenever we experience change to automatically go into fear and anxiety and fight or flight, and we start to actually have tendencies that don't support us and we can't bridge the gap from where we are to where we want to be, then we're, not, we're doing ourselves a disservice. That's why this information, even though, you know, we peel back layers and go inside to, to much of our humanness, it's really, um, it's a way to unveil and see these things that might be holding us back from what we really want and see so basically just to kind of paraphrase what you're saying talking about the first chakra specifically if we if our first chakra is out of alignment it would it much most likely presenting itself as fear in our life correct yeah yeah that's absolutely one of the with, ways with, with whatever it could be relationship it could be whatever so then the next level like in this workshop well, anything that's rocking your foundation, feeling of safety and security, anything that's rocking your ground, your ground, your root, your 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 home, whether that's at your this base. Point. Yeah, your base, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah your base, mm -hmm. and then, and and which which allows a lot of us. I know even for me, I do. When my base is rocked, a lot of times I am experiencing deep feelings of fear, and I and I guess for me, you know, I never equated that to necessarily a chakra. You know, does, okay. and does it have the root chakra? What is, is there another name for it as well? Yeah, it's the, um, oh my goodness. Why did I just forget the name of it? Um, just give me a moment. For some reason, I literally just brain yeah. it, so I have no idea what just happened. It like left my brain. <laughs> You're also packing and trying to move. But hey, so then how do we move that? Like, you know, I know in your workshop, we're going to work a lot with um, learning about the chakra the shadow side to it too, learning about the balanced side of it. And then how do we rebalance it? How do we bring our root chakra back into alignment? Yeah. So it's the Muladhara chakra is the first chakra. So that would be the name. Um, and that's a Sanskrit word. Um, so, I mean, really there's many different ways and it depends how, how, um, how imbalanced you are. You could be slightly imbalanced. Uh, you could be, um, you know, uh, or severely balance. And so really it's um, ways of discovering that how can I create certainty or find ways of feeling safety and security um, that are more positive, more, more. So for example, if somebody's going to show up excessively in that way, they might actually um, not want to, they might, uh, they might hoard they might keep things. They might not want to let things go. They don't like change. They're totally afraid of change. Where somebody, oh, so that would be deficient. Somebody that's excessive might do every, like maybe not, maybe be more like a nomad, like have absolutely no, like like completely terrified to get committed in relationships and things like that. So the way we work at it is, first of all, awareness is always the first step. Become aware of our tendencies. Become aware of the ways in which we're, we're showing up. And, um, and really start to, in those moments, ask ourselves questions um, to get really in present time. Because oftentimes we're really just, we're, we're, re we're reacting to life be because of a previous experience um, that actually isn't valid. But, but it's, not, it's not our rational part of our brain. It's our irrational um, reptilian brain that's, that's joining the party. Um, so we start to learn to be with ourselves in different ways. And we, we use different Different tools and um, and those tools can be maybe it's um, using mantra maybe it's um, creating a routine in your life maybe it's having certain lifelines in your life like either people to call when you start to experience these things maybe having a therapist or a coach so those kind of things to really help you maybe it's getting back in touch with the earth like putting your feet in the earth or connecting with nature um, anything like that um, that can really support you so it really depends on the individual but but it, it, you know, the, the thing I love about the chakras is that this is a, I'm, like, we're literally in this, in this workshop, we're going to talk about this much of a huge, huge topic that you can study for the rest of your lives. And this is not like a come and you're going to get all your chakras balanced. And it's going to be great. This is truly an awareness. This is an opportunity to open up. And the thing that I love about the chakras, it's, it's, learning. it's, it's learning. Yeah, it's learning. And what I love is that repetition is the mother of all school skill. And sometimes the more we hear something, the more it really sets in us and sits in us. I have had people truly, I think I had one person take this eight times and every time he took it, he got something different. And what was really rad is he got to see how certain chakras are, you know, have, have, he has a different relationship with them now and he's not as excessive, but 
we will vacillate all along like I, but 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 it's how we're meeting ourselves in that vacillation like I, I still when i when i start to change and, and and experience change in my life i witness my root chakra but i don't go to the extreme of like absolute like ter being terrified and freaking out and then it affecting the rest of my life the way that i did for so long so um, so there's just just more information, more tools, and that's and then what I want to say to the people that are interested in coming is just like you know giving yourself the gift of greater awareness of of self of 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 where you are and what's happening in your life is is a, one of the greatest gifts you can give to yourself. I love that. So this is good for anyone. Like anyone can come. It's not based on you know your yoga experience. It's really an opportunity for us to all just learn more about ourselves, how we work and how we operate. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. And with this, it's also, um, yeah, like you said, you know, really um, any level of yoga, I mean, some yoga experience is useful, but the bottom line is, because the reason okay. we first circle up and we, we, we discuss these kind of things in detail, and then we start to move our bodies. And this is actually um, trained to me by Sean Korn, who I love, and she's one of my vinyasa teachers from oh, years ago. And, but we move our bodies as we learn about each chakra. And the reason is, is because as you're actually moving energy, because that's what we're doing, that um, you're starting to release and move things and you have deeper increase. So you can start seeing how it's showing up in your actual physical body because there's no separation between the mind and the body. And so it doesn't really matter. I mean, you can sit, literally sit in child's pose. You can modify the whole time. You can do whatever. So really any level is invited. And, um, and, and, but it's about the more so the information and the assimilation of, of the chakra. Chakras. Okay. I love it. I'm excited. I'm really excited for you to come. And I thank you for taking a little moment to kind of give us a little info um, on the chakras Absolutely. and uh, the root chakra in particular. I know in my own life, like when my root chakra is out of balance, I tend to withdraw. Like I'm a, like, oh, I don't want to talk to anybody, shut the door. Like that's a, that is a habit that comes up for me. And so I'm excited to, um, to just learn more and learn how I might be able to even use it in my own life with when I'm out of balance. So thanks, Valerie. Absolutely. I really love you. I love you so Thank much. You. Yay. I'll see you guys soon. Yeah, we'll see you Saturday. Great. Yeah, absolutely. Bye. And in the future, just want to say this, um, in the future, if you're, if you're interested in bringing the chakras to you, you can always reach out to me and let me know if you can't make this one. Um, so just keep that in mind, too. <laughs> I love it. All right. Love you. Love you, too, babe.